Welcome to the heart of a Viking. This channel offers elementary art lessons taught by Mrs. Minto from the Cape and Lopen School District in Delaware. I look forward to virtually creating with you. There are new lessons posted weekly. Subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss a single one. So go grab your art supplies and your thinking caps and let's begin. So I'm going to take my glue bottle, open it up. I know it's open because the orange cap is twisted and raised up above the white cap here. If they're after you open it, if there's any dried glue at the top, you can pick it off, but they should be pretty good. All right, then I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. Squeezing and moving, I want lines that are about that thick. I don't want them to be too skinny and I don't want them to be too puddly. If I make them too puddly, then I have to be really careful later as I am working on my, um, the watercolor part. So I want them, like this is like perfect so far. I want them to be raised up like little speed bumps across my paper, but I don't want them to be very puddly. If you're having a hard time with that, probably your problem is you're squeezing too hard and then you're not, um, you're not moving quick enough. Those are the two main problems. If your lines are getting too big, is you're either squeezing too hard or you're not moving quick enough. And this is a slow process. Notice sometimes I stop squeezing, but I kind of go back and forth. I'm kind of doing that right here. That's because I can see that there's still like glue coming out. And if I try and pull away, it's gonna make weird lines all over my paper. And I don't want that either. So. I'm just like, I stop squeezing and I just kind of wait for that little trail of glue to stop. There we go. And then I keep moving forward, tracing as best as I can. Now tracing with glue is not like tracing with Sharpie. It's not going to be 100% accurate. That's way more um, flat than I wanted it to be, but you know what it is, what it is. It's glue. I'm trying to draw with it. It's a tricky process. So after I'm totally done, which I am at about 50% right now, once I'm totally done, I'm going to grab my salt, pinch salt between my fingers and sprinkle it on. I can show you a second way that's faster, but messier. So you'll have to make a decision which way is your um, preference if you want to take extra time for doing cleanup or if you want to pinch and go a little bit slower. Okay, one more line. Last one. Okay, so the so the pinching method, let me put this over here. Okay, so the pinching method means I can hold this in one hand, take my pincher fingers, grab some, and sprinkle it on. And I want it to be coated. I want it to be like all over the, um, the glue. So I want, it's like I'm putting glitter on. If you've ever used glitter before, it's kind of the same process, except it's salt instead. And there's obviously too much. It's like all over my paper too, but that's okay. The other way you can do this is, yep, you can turn it to the side, sort of shake it like a salt shaker, and sprinkle it totally on. But if you dump it all in one spot and you don't have enough for the rest, it's kind of, you know, too bad, too sad, and you have to um, scoop it back up and dump it back in your cup and then keep going. All right, so when you're done, give your glue a second to attach to, now I have a little bit left, so I'm just gonna re-sprinkle some areas. There we go. So kind of use it all up. And then give your um, project a second to like grasp all of that um, salt. Then when you waited a couple of seconds, you can pick it up very gently, shake it. Notice I'm shaking it onto my newspaper. That's because, let me shake it this way. Gentle though, because if I shake it too hard, the glue is gonna run. Shake it, shake it, shake it. I'm gonna put this somewhere else for a second. I'm gonna put it actually over here, but you can just put yours like on a different spot on your desk. Now, this salt here can be saved. I'm gonna fold my newspaper in half like that, get my little cup and make a funnel and shake it back in. 
Okay, so for this next part, I'm going to be using my marker paint. Remember that at school, I make my marker paint by soaking the old dried out washable Crayola markers in a cup of water overnight. The cup of water magically soaks out some of the ink that's left up in the barrel of the marker itself and turns into these beautiful watercolor paints, and I call them marker paints. Um, if you don't have marker paints or if you don't have old markers to soak in water overnight for a night, then you can use your watercolor paint trays um, if you have those, um, but really those are the only kinds of paints that are going to work for this type of painting process that we're about to begin. So it has to be something that's very watery. So if you're using the type of paints I'm using, you simply just dip in the cup and then you drip the, the paint onto your snowflake. If you're using watercolor paints, you'll need to have a nice wet paintbrush, tickle gently on the color you're hoping to use, tickle, 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 and then drip the paint onto the salt from there. Then you'll have to get more water and more paint each time you run out of paint. So the water is the important aspect of this particular painting style that we're starting right now. Now, this part is um, nothing like painting. Really what I'm doing is dripping the paint onto the snowflake. I'm not actually touching my brush to the salt. If I do, the salt will get on my brush and then I don't, um, I don't have any way to rinse it off. So I'm just taking this paint, touching it right to the very top of the salt and it's so cool. You can see it like go on and spread out. I can't wait for you to see yours, but it kind of goes on and so it sort of spreads out. I can add more color in a spot if I want it to be a bit brighter, but I don't want it to get like too, too wet. I'm not sure exactly what would happen if you, I feel like it would make a huge mess if it got like extremely wet with the salt. And when you're ready to switch colors, make sure that you don't need yellow anywhere else. So I wanna finish this middle part here with yellow. And then I want some yellow near the ends as well. So once I finish here, I'll go ahead and put my yellow on the ends like maybe up here and then I can switch to my pink because if I try to go back to yellow later I'm still gonna have pink in my brush since it is the darker color and it will never be like pure yellow again after this so my brush is just right above I'm not painting at all the paintbrush is simply just like a sponge holding on to the paint and moving it around. So now I'm going to take my brush, kind of brush it on the newspaper, get out some of that yellow, and then I can move on to my darker color, which for me was yellow, pink. There's like a little bristle or something, so I'm going to just brush that away. There we go. And then just tap that on the surface. I can also be fun and put some of the pink in the yellow. So maybe what would happen if I put some of the pink into the yellow? Yep, it'll make like kind of a corally sort of color. And you might get some like happy accidents, we'll call those. I didn't really mean for it to spread right there, but it did. So we'll just call that a happy accident. And then put some more, oh, oh, I did yellow. Whoopsie. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Back to here and here and here. And I can just keep doing this. Of course, I don't want it to get too, too wet because I'm worried about what could happen. But because of that nice waxy crayon that I had on here from yesterday, it should keep the color and the water and the paint sort of in its spot where it's supposed to be. When you're all finished, you're going to put it to the side to dry, of course. I don't know if you could tell from this video, but I was actually filming in one of the fourth grade classes that are learning in person at HOB, so you might have heard some of your friends' voices in the background. Um, but this is some of the works of art that they had created on the day that we were uh, working, and they're all just sitting here drying nice and flat. Now, these are technically done once they're dry. However, there's one additional step that I did not film, but I can explain to you that you can do if you'd like to whenever you're all done. So when you're all done, it can be finished just as it is. You can just hang it up and enjoy it. Or you could go over a piece of newspaper or over a trash can and gently with the palm of your hand and the bottom of your fingers, rub away the salt that is on the surface of your work of art. Now, when you do that, two things are going to happen. 
of course, one, the salt's going to fall off and make a mess and make sure you're over a newspaper or over a trash can when you do that. And the second thing that's going to happen is you're going to feel worried that all of the pretty colors are going to go away because whenever you are pushing the salt away, it looks like it's colorful. But honestly, underneath the glue that was holding the salt in place has sucked up and will contain a lot of the color from your watercolors. So whenever you are um, flaking away the salt, it looks really pretty and really cool underneath. So I kind of encourage you to take that step. If you don't take that step, there is a chance that the salt could flake off on its own and create a mess wherever your artwork is hanging. So um, if you want to go ahead and do that, you can. Sorry, I didn't get the Part of that on video but um, yes you can definitely do that over a trash can gently rub it with your hand and rub away the salt and the color underneath is really vibrant and very pretty too all right so I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here next time at the heart of a Viking HOB artists don't forget to hop on over to art Sonia to upload a photograph of your piece of artwork to your art portfolio I can't wait to see it.